Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow or just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. Before I introduce my two guests on this special father-son, president-vice president episode, I will share another entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. On this episode, I will feature the famous entrepreneur who you all know in Steve Jobs. I'm not sure if you knew, but Steve Jobs actually dropped out of college as the cost was just too expensive for his family to bear. However, he was still able to unofficially audit classes. This means that you can attend a class, but you're not able to actually receive college credit for the class. At this point, he was surviving off returning Coca-Cola bottles for change as frequently as he could and by also getting free meals from the local Hare Krishna temple. Steve Jobs claimed he got the inspiration for the groundbreaking Mac font designs and typefaces from a calligraphy course that he actually stopped in on. It has been said that it is because of this man, Steve Jobs, that computers have more than one font and not just a standard text. To no surprise, he later formed the Apple Computer Company with his friends, Steve Wozniak, a friend who he actually grew up with but was also another electronics expert. When Steve died, he had a net worth of over $8 billion. That's right, I said a B. It's safe to say he will live on forever and influence young go-getters evermore. Hey Rick, what'd you like best about that story? I like uh, he never gave up. He never gave up. What about you, Austin? What was big for you? Same. You know, we got an education without being able to afford it. And uh, he's one of the most inspirational people around right now. Yeah, those voices you just heard are the sounds of today's guest. I have a very special episode for you all today, as it is a father and son combo who run one of the most successful security companies in New York, being chosen as best security company in the best of LI competition four years in a row now for 2020. Very remarkable. I'm happy to have him on the show. They were neighbors of mine growing up and we stayed very close over the years since school. They're going to tell you all about their stories and how they started a security company from the ground up and turned it to a name brand in the industry. I will now introduce to you the president and vice president, Rick and Austin Allen. Thanks for joining my show, guys. Hey, great to be here, Vinny. Thanks for having us, buddy. Rick, why don't you first share your story, and then we'll touch on how you got up here today. Let's go through your story a little bit. Well, back after I got out of professional wrestling, I wrestled for 15 years professional, and then I went into bodyguard work and protecting some celebrities and rock stars and stuff like that. And I saw there was a need to up the security game in New York, New York City, and I got to work at some nightclubs and uh, got to be hanging around with some famous people. And... uh, just started my security company back in 1999. It was called Forte Security. I started out in my basement. I had one computer. I did all the hiring. I did all the payroll. I did all the collections of money. And I worked shifts, too. So it was kind of 1999 lean times. We're moving by. Austin, let's give a little bit about you. Give a little bit about your background, and then we'll end up how you came on to join the company. Uh, well, I was working with my father since, uh, what, 18 years old? Started 18, working special events, going with him to the nightclubs and on the teen nights and uh, seeing how things were. Um, then I went down to college in Florida and it just didn't work out for me. So I saw he had a need for some extra help. I came back and started just learning the business, uh, working in the nightclubs and seeing how we did, you know, with the back office and the hiring and, and stuff like that. And, and now today we, uh, we're real busy and uh, I, I'm involved day to day and you know I have a love for it now you know it's it's what I do for a living absolutely you know? it's great to see a passion from a father and son and now guys we're gonna get into the big five each episode what I do with my guests is I go over these five questions to help you the listeners all learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur you boys ready to go ready to go so, great Rick we'll start with you when did you first realize that you weren't happy we touched on that you were wrestling a little bit or maybe you just needed a change to be that full-on entrepreneur do your own thing well in wrestling or any sports uh, you know 
anything in sports, you only have a life expectancy between 10 and 15 years. Wrestling is a contact sport, just like football and hockey. Uh, you know, your knees, your back, uh, you know, the road's really hard on people. And, uh, you know, I knew uh, when I was approaching like 35, it was, it was really time to get out and start looking for another career. And I was blessed. Um, I took a lot of criminal justice courses in, in, in college. And I was uh, went to the police academy in Jacksonville, Florida, before I um, got into pro wrestling. So I always knew that I wanted to do something with law enforcement or maybe, you know, security. And right after wrestling, I got to, you know, bodyguard some really big name people in the entertainment world. And I got to get a taste of that and I saw there was a need to grow you know a lot of stuff in New York City and just the caliber of guards out there wasn't up to to you know people's standards so uh, not that I wasn't happy what I was doing I was very happy wrestling but I knew there'd be a time and a date you know sooner than later that I had to change my career um, you know I had uh, a family to take care of and you know if I wasn't wrestling anymore I didn't really have a, a trade so I just went back on what I knew how to do was bouncing and working clubs and uh, concerts and you know providing uh, protection to people on their property. Did you start down in Florida with the security company or you started right up here in New York City? Well, I actually started in Florida. I used to bounce in a lot of nightclubs down in Jacksonville, Florida. Did some bodyguard work down there when I wasn't wrestling and okay. stuff. So I got to work out with some uh, a couple of rock bands, 38 Special and Molly Hatchet down in Jacksonville, Florida, Southern Rock Bands. Nice. And I, I ran security at a place called Playground South and Confetti's down in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, after that, I moved up to New York after when I was wrestling and uh, just left off you know I went and got my security license because in New York State you have to be a licensed security guard to work security and I uh, got that in 1999 I went and I got my watch guard and patrol agency started my own company got incorporated as Forte Security and go. we were Forte Security for 18 years in 2000 it's uh, 2016 we rebranded the company to American <laughs> Protection Bureau and uh, the last four years, 2017, 18, 19, and 20, we won Best of Long Island for a security guard company. Absolutely. So I'm very proud of that. Yeah, Austin, awesome. how about you? You know, you mentioned you went down to college and you started getting involved in the family business. Maybe describe that turning point for our listeners. When did you realize, I'm going into the entrepreneurial route with my old man? Mm, when things weren't just working out down there, you know. Um, you know, I called my dad and, you know, he said, you know, whenever you're ready, come back and I got a spot for you here. And then he gave me uh, he gave me a chance, and I just ran with it. And we've been working well together for what? I've been doing this for about five years now. Five years, really strong here in the office, and you know, five day -day years as president, operations. vice president. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, over the years before that, I would just you know fill in, you know, work retail stores, do like work from the ground up. You go pick up money, drop off money, or, or learning checks, the business. You know, and I, yeah. I, I taught him from the ground up. He worked construction sites. He worked teen nights at the clubs he would be like an undercover guard you know going into places and tell me who was working who wasn't working who was messing around who wasn't holding their end of the bargain and you know uh, not uh, making our company look good i think the best thing is first-hand experience of whatever you're doing if you're out there in the trenches you're learning day by day it's how you become a more effective leader and now for the vice president role let's let's segue right into that austin now that you're in this entrepreneurial journey with your dad what would you say one or two of the most difficult parts are for you as an entrepreneur for me it's just uh you know you Every day you got to be accountable and you got to you got to work hard when you run a business and you can't give up. Every day is, is just as important. Um, yeah, get into you, that accountability a little bit. Who no one's holding you responsible now you yeah. are the boss. So how do you how do you get to that? Just uh knowing that, you know, your employees are your most valuable asset and that you got to keep getting work for them and you want to grow and just uh you know, it's it's important to just uh, you know, continue to to show up for the brand. You know, now we have a brand where we're really, really well known on Long Island. We yeah. still do a lot in, in New York City and stuff, but people know us now, and they know what they're getting when you know they talk about APB. So um, yeah, it's just uh, it's exciting. But you know, even when you want to take off, you can't because you know um, you know there's always someone else out there. There's always competition. So you yeah, want to beat so. your competition by, like I said, using that word, being accountable and and just working hard at it, you know? Yeah, give me one more. So accountability helps you build that brand name that you guys have built. Give me one more. What's hard for you being an entrepreneur? What's hard? Uh, I don't know, time. There's not enough time in a day, you know, to get everything done. But, um, you know, we always seem to pull through. And, you know, in this business, there's ups and downs. But, you know, you want to have more good times than bad. 
And uh, it's now how many times you get knocked down is how many times you get back up. Yeah. And uh, well, the main been, thing is way to live by that. Yeah. Just uh, you know, you got to fight for what you want in anything you do, whether it's you know selling cars or selling real estate or owning your own business. You know, you got to fight for what you want and. Uh, Hopefully, you know, you win the fight. Sometimes you lose a fight, but, you know, you got to get back in it and start swinging and, yeah. you know, roll with the punches. We've been knocked down before, but we always get back up and, you know, we work harder than ever. That's right. Well, I'm yeah. sure you agree with both those difficult parts of being an entrepreneur. Give me two more of your own. At running your own business, what's, what's, what are two difficult parts for you? Well, the hardest part is, you know, accounts payable. You know, accounts people payable, always want it. you to work. And then, you know, when it comes time to get paid, that you know, the check's in the mail or, you know, they'll bounce checks to you or they won't pay you on time. Always chasing payroll. You're always chasing money. And uh, it, it's sad. And then people try to go after your accounts. There's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of uh, guys, you know, they'll... They'll, they'll quit for a quarter more an hour, you know. You give them work year-round, and then when New Year's Eve comes, a guy will offer them, you know, an extra 20 or 30, 40 bucks, and they'll jump ship for one night to work with another company, and then you've been giving them work year-round, and, you know, there's no loyalty in this business anymore, you know. And, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a loyal team of guys that, that could be uh, – that could take on the world with us. You know? About how big is your team now? How many guys you got now? We have over 800 guards on our state roster right 800. now. 800. We're licensed in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Florida. Wow. It's, it looks like a good company to bring on the show. With four consecutive awards is something pretty admirable. But, Rick, what would you say one of your greatest failures was? And why is it still sticking with you? What did it teach you? The greatest failure was... It, it wasn't... My fault, uh, one of my guards got killed in the line of duty. He was working at a, a nightclub in New York City called Gronica on Avenue B uh, many years ago. And um, the club owners, they didn't want people to get patted down. Uh, you know, when, when you're doing security, you want to be responsible for everybody that's coming into a place, and including your employees. And, and sometimes, you know, they would tell me, oh, it's high-end models that come here, or celebrities come here. It's not that type of crowd. It's not a thug crowd. and It's not this and that. Well, they just passed a non-smoking ban about 14 years ago in New York City where you can't smoke in nightclubs and restaurants and all that. So we had three guys working at this club, Gronica, one night, and uh, this Asian uh, party came in with about 12 people. And come to find out that some of these Asian guys were a member of a Asian street gang called the Ghost Shadows. We didn't know it at the time. They were all dressed nice and everything. But nobody was checked when they came in for weapons or anything. And one of the people had a knife on them. Make a long story short, um, they kept smoking downstairs. They, the security kept telling them to put out their cigarettes, go outside and smoke. They kept laughing at security. So finally, security told them they had to leave. Um, one of my guys was asking them to leave and was escorting one of the guys upstairs. A guy came up from behind him and severed his femoral artery with a knife, cut him in his groin area, and he bled out before he could uh, get in the ambulance there or get help. They kept him alive so they could try to harvest his... Uh, you know, organs and stuff to donate, um, but yeah. the family didn't allow that. But that's probably one of my greatest uh, failures. I didn't, I failed to protect one of my guards. I mean, I, I hold that with me. It wasn't my fault. I know that. And but it's, you know, I wish every day he was still with us. His name was Dana Blake. Everybody called him Shazam. He was a gentle giant. He was about six six, three hundred and twenty pounds. Um, never married. But uh, he lived over in Queens, and uh, just a great guy. He was one of my supervisors, and uh, uh, one of these uh, guys took his life. He's in prison right now. They caught the guy, but he's doing 25 years to life, and he's been in probably 15, 16 years already. One of the main guys who, when you started your company, he was one, he was of, one of my guys, main right? guys, and he, he's the one that got uh, these accounts for us where he was working Gronica and Ludlow Bar and the Lower okay. East Side. Lower East Side used to be a really trendy, upscale place, and they used to have a lot of dive bars there and upscale bars and it was just uh you know on every corner down there was two or three bars you know and the people would walk from place to place and bar hop and they'd have a good time back in the you know early 90s early 2000s back then and now you know there's so many places out there now restaurants clubs taverns bars um there's just so much to do in new york city and long island now oh, yeah and um it's just, uh, you know, that's why our business is, is profitable and it's booming right now because we offer a, a specialized service to these specialized industries, whether it's a teen night, whether it's, uh, you know, any type of concerts, uh, venues, um, 
catering halls, you, you name it, we're doing everything out there. And uh, we're having a good time doing it. I enjoy what I do. And what you put into anything is what you're going to get out of it. Absolutely. Well, you guys have really done a lot of great things. So, Austin, what's a, what's a situation that stuck with you, a failure-type moment, and why is it sticking with you still today? What did it teach you? I wouldn't say anything's really been a failure. It's mostly been everything's been a lesson. Right. You know, like I said, there's so many ups and downs with the business. And in this business, you win some, you lose some. But, you know, like you say, you never give up. And that's the mentality we have. We're, we're never giving up. And each day is an opportunity for us to go out and conquer the world. A lot of like, like New Year's Eve is one of our biggest nights in the nightclub industry. Yeah. That and Thanksgiving Eve, you know, oh, everybody yeah. goes out. And, and a lot of guys like to call out last minute on us, you know, and finding good quality guys that are accountable for their actions. You know, I, I wish I could write a book called the Excuse Book because <laughs> we've heard every excuse in the book. You know, I got a, a runny nose. I don't have any uh, daycare for my child. And leaves uh, you guys. My car broke down. And we got to figure it tire. out. We got to put together the resources to figure out how we're going to handle and you know and, and cover these things so but we, we always, always maintain and somehow come through and, and and cover it but you know we like to put out a good product we don't want to just put out you know love that, you know yeah. we want to keep the same guys working at the same locations of and course. everything so the people know who they're working with and everything and that people get comfortable with where they're working and stuff and try to put them close to where they live you know so they don't have to travel that far Great. um you know, we, we try to put out a good product, uniform security guards. We have armed security. We have bodyguards. So, you know, we teach. Uh, we have a school over in Levittown called Long Island Training Center, BSI Security Training, where we train all our guards. We train first aid. We train CPR there. We train active shooter courses, and we train fire guard courses. Yeah. So we're in the business to protect people and property from harm. And that's what separates you guys, obviously, winning these awards year after year. You're doing the right thing. You're taking it serious. and Yeah. You yeah, got to teach things. the people what what the businesses want. You got to be a good listener. You know, you can't tell them you're the best product out there. You got to show them. You know, you got to let them see for themselves. And the greatest uh, compliment is a, a customer recommending you to their friends and other people. You know, oh, yeah. that, that's the greatest compliment that I could do. We don't advertise that much. We did hire a marketing company last year, and they've been helping us market our company and get our brand out there. But you know, when somebody calls up, hey, uh, you know, this guy recommended us from this business, or you know, the Bolson Group recommended us, or Scotto Brothers, or mm -hmm. Lessings, or something like that in the catering business. Oh, I, I seen you guys at uh, Fight for Long Island Charity, and uh, you guys were donated the security for that, or you know. One of these beer festivals, craft beer festivals, where you know you have a great South Bay brewery or Harborhead Brewery, and they're having like Oktoberfest, and you have 10, 15 guards there. And everybody's happy. You're greeting everybody. You're saying hello, good night. You see somebody drunk, you got them a cab, put them in the cab. They call back and thank you. You know that's that's where the, the good thing is. And you know, like we say in the nightclub business and the security business, you're only as good as your last shift. Like so you can do great that. the whole year long and one little incident or, you know, you're late for work or uh, you, don't, you don't stop a fight quick enough or somebody hits somebody and you don't break it up fast enough, you know, you're, do, you're bad, you know. But, uh, you know, you find a wallet, you return it or somebody's pocketbook or a cell phone, you know, you're doing good things, you know. And you got to have ethical behavior to be a security guard. you got to be accountable for your actions. And I'm a firm believer in that in general in life. You do something good, pay it forward, the karma will follow you 100%. around. 100%. Yeah, but Austin, if you could choose to have a conversation and learn from any entrepreneur, dead or alive, any industry, who are you talking to and what are you talking about? I'd say it's uh, my favorite athlete who just got inducted to the Hall of Fame, Derek Jeter. Let's hear why. Congratulations to Jeter. Um, just the way he conducted himself, you know, in his line of work, you know, being a professional athlete, he was just so professional what he did and always took the high road, said and did all the right things. And Definitely now, a class act on and off the field. Yeah, and after he retired, now he's with the Miami Marlins. He's the president there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, CEO. Uh, yeah, he's doing some some big things. And like I said, if it's someone I would just follow his footsteps, it would be him, you know. You can't never argue. see him doing anything wrong. It was always the right thing. Absolutely. Can't argue with that choice. What about you, Rick? Who's someone that comes to mind? You know, believe it or not, he's a lot younger than me. And I, I, I met his father a few times when I was growing up in Jacksonville, Florida. Tim Tebow. Okay. Tebow just got married uh, earlier this month. Um, he's been a role model ever since he played, uh, you know, University Christian, a high school down in Florida. Uh, I mean, not the University Christian. He played down in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, football then he went to the university of florida he won the heisman trophy there a couple of national championships then you know his pro career now he's trying to get on with the mets and baseball and everything he touches he's just a role model uh, you know uh, i think he's done great things and you know he's a christian man and he, he spreads the word that's a great choice and, uh you know he's uh he's just a really good guy and 
everything he does, I mean, you know, he represents himself well, and uh, he's an entrepreneur himself, so he, he does a lot of good things. The sports commentary, he doesn't get, you know, he doesn't trash talk anybody, he doesn't put anybody down, Certainly, and he leads yeah. by example, and, you know, anybody who's met Tim Tebow will tell you the same thing. You know, I hope my grandsons, you know, grow up to be like a Tim Tebow, so... Okay. You know, he went to go visit a lot of people in the hospitals and, and, and he charities. Has a, a and he a night out, you know. He does a lot of stuff with, um, he's got his own charity down there. And um, he does a lot, a lot of good work for people. And, uh, you know, I take my hat off to him and, you know, uh, I wish him well in anything he does. Well, so we'll have to make sure you guys tag him in this podcast when it comes out. Maybe he'll give it a listen, make that happen. But let's maybe answer this one together, guys. Let's look a bit into the future, one year and five years. You guys are ready. You keep graduating to the next tier, the next level in this business with four consecutive top Long Island award companies. Where do you see this company in one year? What do you want to see change in one year? Well, hopefully we're going to double our business with a marketing company and with continuing to win awards and the branding and stuff. When I first started this, uh, I set a goal for myself. I wanted to you know, do a million dollars within the first three years, you yeah. know, at least do a million dollars in sales. And we succeeded in doing that, and we've done a lot more throughout the years. So, you know, every year you want to do better than the year before. You know, you want to move forward. You don't want to go backwards. So hopefully by next year we could hopefully double our business and, uh, you know, just get good quality guards that want to be part of a good team. Um, you know, uh, APB Nation, we're, we're branding everything, <laughs> yeah. and we're, yeah. um, we're out there. People know we're out there. We have vehicles. We have gem cars, golf carts. We do a lot of street fairs and, and mm. um, live at fives and stuff like that. We're in a lot of chamber of commerces throughout Long Island. Oh, yeah. So we do try to give back to our communities, and we try to represent and, you know, any type of charitable organization, we try to, you know, help donate when it's possible, whatever we can, yeah. as long as it's feasible for our company and fits our business model. And, you know, yeah. we're not really politically affiliated with anybody. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we just want to be, you know, have an opportunity and a chance to earn people's business and do right for people on Long Island and New York City. Absolutely, because you guys already have your hands in almost every possible security. We have the foundation built and, like you said, kind of want to double the business, but even more so want to grow the business you know across the states you know i want to go into other states for license in jersey so that's the five-year plan right there i like that that's yeah. the five-year plan to go down the east coast and you know establish a big big name brand all yeah. the way down to florida and back well thanks so much that's boys cool. i really appreciate you guys Thank coming you, on the show good luck in florida good luck, the, val buddy. the value you guys provide today you know a company that's been through you guys you know started 1999 still here still kicking rebranding there's a lot of valuable lessons for our listeners to hear but austin rick it's time for the last word we'll have you go first austin what's one thing you want to share with the listeners today that we did not get to touch on many years of friendship with you and uh you know you're doing your thing to never give up on anything in life great things will come and uh there's just so much to look forward to so you know you know what, what i'm thankful for today is Vinny, you for being here not left for dead you're here very much alive and, appreciate and you're that. doing good things in life we wish you well everybody here at apb everybody here in northport all your friends and family you know we help support your book launch and everything Absolutely. else and we're going to continue to you know support you in anything you do in life so Absolutely. i appreciate you're a lifelong you guys. friend uh your friend of apb you're a friend of the allen family and austin myself so you're always welcome at our home our offices and you know, if you ever need anything, we're only a phone call away. I appreciate that. You know, I always make time to see you boys when I'm up here in New York visiting the family. So going back down to Florida. But this is my last stop before that trip for the winter. Austin, awesome. you mind sharing your social media for everybody listening in the website? The way everybody can go ahead, give you a follow, see what adventure you're at. And then eventually, I'm sure, request well, your services. We're trying to get some likes on Facebook right yeah, now. So, so if anybody can help us with that. Do but, some um, likes. All right, yeah. What, what, uh, what are the handles at, boys? Okay, our website is apbguards.com. And our Instagram handle is APB underscore security. And on Facebook, it's APB security. So everybody remember, that's APB and security on there. The name of our security training school is the Long Island Training Center. And the website for that is LITrainingCTR.com. Yeah, so let's oh, piggyback on that. I know I know the information, but, you know, Rick, for people listening, do you license them? Do you help them get armed? What do you do for these guys? We do every all aspects of security. Uh, in New York State, you have to be a licensed security guard to work security at anywhere throughout the state. So you have to take an eight-hour pre-assignment course. You have to take a 16-hour on-the-job training course. You have to be electronically fingerprinted, and you have to send up a security guard application up to Albany to be licensed. You need a $36 money order for that. 
and the license is good for a two-year period. Okay. Within that two years, you'll have to take an eight-hour annual course every calendar year to keep your license in good standing with the state of New York. So we offer all that stuff. We offer armed guard classes. We offer Red Cross CPR. We have, to, uh, have active shooter training, tactical handcuffing, and OC spray, pepper spray training. We have uh, fire guard training for a certificate program in Nassau and Suffolk County, and we got you ready for your uh, fire guard course in uh, New York City. And you had to go down to Metro Tech in Brooklyn to get that with a letter from your employer. So we offer all aspects of security guard training from A to Z. We help you get licensed. We even help you try to find job placement, whether it's with APB. And that's one of the main reasons I bought a security guard training school and got licensed to be a state instructor. And I'm the school director. And Austin's a state instructor. We have over eight instructors that teach armed and unarmed training with us. We have six retired law enforcement officers from NASA. Uh, police department who taught at the Nassau County Police Academy. We have two federal firearms instructors that work for the uh, Department of Corrections and uh, we, we have a couple others that work for the Federal Bureau of Prisons uh, that, that are retired now and that are, are firearms instructors that taught at every pretty much uh, facility up and down the East Coast fire guard training for the federal you know, prison system. So we have a lot of good things and a lot of years experience. We're probably the number one training school in New York. We also offer um, a 40 hour instructor development course where they can be state instructors with a security guard training program. Uh, we usually offer that every three months at our school. And we're probably one of the only schools that offers that class so with uh, Tom Flynn and Bob Loveridge who wrote the security guard manual for New York State. So we have some excellent, excellent trainers with our school. Yeah, I wanted to delve into that because we talked about the awards. We talked about all the things you provide. And remember to follow those accounts at APB Security. And remember to check out the show on Instagram and Facebook at your favorite morning podcast and on Twitter at Podcasts by Lancey. Remember my handles are at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media and YouTube. And my website is VincentALancey.com. Be sure to check out my book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption on Amazon now. But be sure to DM me or email me. I want to hear what you think. If you really like today's episode, please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur five stars. I work very hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. As always, I will end the show with a quote that inspired me and know it will for you too. Dream bigger, do bigger. Thanks for listening and I'll see you all in the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur.